are really meant to bring out the best in each one of us. So with the freedom and the rigor, uh, I, I really love the atmosphere at SSE. And I like to teach in SSE, and that's the, probably the title of my short speech here. I love to teach at SSE. Because let me tell you a personal story. <clears throat> I, I, I'm in the physics department. I, I teach in the physics department. I came, became the dean uh, in February. And before that, I was faculty member in physics. And I, all the physics that I know of, the very little that I know of, <laughs> keeping in view how much there is out there to be learned, the, the physics that I know is through teaching. I, I know a little bit of physics because I've taught physics. I'm an, I'm an electrical engineer by my first degree. And I did my engineering from UET, the engineering university in Lahore. And there's hardly any physics that is taught there. So I took my engineering courses and then I went for a PhD. Uh, and this was a PhD in Europe. So there wasn't any rigorous coursework during my PhD. So I got straight off into research. Therefore, I never had an opportunity in my lifetime after my FSE to undertake serious rigorous physics courses. But I landed in the physics department somehow. <laughs> and all the physics that I know of, very little that I know of, is through two things. One, I enter the classroom, I have a subject to teach, I have about 200 or 250 students sitting in front of me. Many of them are not going to become physicists. Most of them are going to become either computer scientists or electrical engineers. That's the way the wind is blowing these days. And I have to take a body of knowledge in physics and distill that body of knowledge and convey it to my students in a way that my students become my co-learners. They, they learn with me. They become a part of my, of my expedition in learning. And my expedition is to go into the nooks and corners of physics, look at something beautiful, look at something exciting and go deeper. And then take a step back and look at the panoramic picture of how the landscape of physics looks like. So it was an exercise in understanding and appreciating the aesthetic beauty of nature, the symmetry and the power of the mathematical laws that describe this beauty. And then the human ingenuity that takes this beauty and produces new gadgets, new inventions, new technologies that alleviate human suffering increase the comfort in our lives and make our lives easier. And in fact, the technologies that save our lives in the first place. So this teaching expedition taught me physics. It taught me how to read a book. It taught me how to appreciate the nuances of a book. It taught me how to communicate with my students. It taught me what are the major underlying concepts that are at a primary level, which should be my main focus. And it taught me what are the secondary examples and applications that can enrich my teaching. So all of the physics that I know is through the classroom. And the second venue where I learned all my physics is through the laboratory. Uh, all SSE freshmen have to take a physics laboratory. This is a compulsory course, a mandatory course for all SSE graduates. So I started building these experiments. Uh, I did some literature survey. I looked at the best practices in the world. Then I gathered and assembled the components, the materials, the equipment that are required to build experiments. Then I gathered a team of assistants and a team of engineers and physicists who could help me in this pursuit of creativity. And then we built this tapestry of experiments. We have about 150 different kinds of experiments, basic and advanced in, in the phys lab, which demonstrate physics. 
in an insightful fashion. Then I thought about the methodology to teach physics in the laboratory. We came up with this idea of Socratic dialogue. The Socratic dialogue means that you have a piece of equipment and experiment, and then you build a questionnaire that engages the experimenter and the teacher in a, a to and fro dialogue. You ask questions, you probe with the experiment, and try to find answers to those questions. You stumble and you fail. Then you change the course of action. And by learned, repeated uh, inquiry, and by learning from your mistakes, you come up with a solution. Then we started the physics studio. The physics studio is basically meant to be an open-ended playground of physics. It, it helps students explore on their own. It provides a broad question and let students think how they could design and create a new experiment. So all the physics that I learned is through teaching. And that's why teaching is so dear to me. I, 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 I like to talk to my students through the lens of experiments and through the lens of the many equations that I write on the blackboard, the many sketches and drawings that I make on the blackboard, and through the stories that I tell to my students. And it's not just about physics that, that I love teaching at SSE. It's about catharsis. My, uh, my dear students, you, you're going to be, uh, we're going to interact soon in a physical sense, but whenever I'm, I'm down with life, I, I feel slightly burdened in, in my heart. I, I just want to close my eyes and think about myself, about my surroundings and just want to take a break from the daily grind of life. I, I love walking into the classroom at that juncture in my, in my daily routine. And when I go into the classroom, I think it's a different world out there. It's an insulated environment where, where all the other sorrows and all the other pressures of life, they just switch off for a little bit. And then you, it's you and your students. It's the blackboard, the chalk, the, the, the demonstrations that I have in front of me on, on the table. And it's a one hour long pursuit to happiness. Uh, it's uh, Imam Ghazali was a famous theologian. He wrote a book which is called Kimiya Sadat, The Alchemy of Happiness. And I think this one hour of concentrated interaction with the students in the pursuit of learning a body of knowledge that is out there and the human mind, the power and the prowess of the human mind that is there to rip apart these facts of nature and to make sense of them is is a wonderful expedition in its own right so teaching to me is a catharsis and when we talk to our students and you're going to become our students you're already our students <coughs> we we want our students to become uh, to become mirrors of this sense of wonder the, 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 the wonder that is in our heart. We would like our students to reflect the same kind of wonder and excitement and awe about the universe. And it's not just awe and standing akimbo and being wondered by the universe. It's actually getting down to your notebooks, to your pens and papers, to your computer screens, and actually working it out all by yourself from alpha to Z, just work out all the details. You have to be rigorous. You have to take some effort and take some pains in going through the process of, of, of learning. And as you embark on your journey in SSE, I would like you to look at two organs in your body. One is the brain. The brain is the last unexplored frontier as we know of today, in human endeavor. And think that the brain has two parts. It has the left and the right hemisphere. And we want science to be done with both hemispheres. We are not just analytical robots who are just using the left hemisphere of the brain and working out calculations in minute details and being affixed with certain things that 
our, our primary and focused attention, we would also like to utilize the right hemisphere of the brain, which talks about intuition, which talks about fascination, which talks about the music of the spheres, which talks about the larger picture. And the other organ I would like you to just pay a little attention to is your heart. Is you would like to use, you would not like to become an emotionless creature while you are at SSC. And I, I say this for our faculty as well, and for myself as well, that we are not emotionless. We have to be sensitive to what's going around us. We have to be sensitive to our past, to our literary past, to our scientific past, to our intellectual past. And we have to look forward and we have to be open and susceptible to understanding and listening to the noise and the cacophony of, of the people around us. So we are not an island, as, this, as the poet John Dunn says, we are not an island, we are a part of the mainland. We have to connect with the society and connect with our peers.